What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty, and right now I am sitting down with Mick. Mick is a multi-hyphenated person. He does all, right. a, he does all kinds of shit uh, from... Um, you may know him from the music that he puts out into the world or the people that he's put music out in the world with fashion, men's health, tech, science, science, some magic. Some shit. <laughs> I think what D Toys R Us messed up with is over the years they didn't create an experience. No, right totally so not. like when you go to toys r us it, like there's one thing to go there to buy a toy but you could do that on amazon walmart.com you could do it on the internet just to buy a toy so but at toys r us you have a chance to play with the toys and make mess with the toys and do toy events and you know like create toys r us experiences and they never did that did you have a lot of toys growing up like 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 like, like no. transformers and stuff like that well i did Marvel. have toys but i didn't have i didn't have a lot of toys i mean i was an outdoors kid my punishment as a kid was to stay inside when i was a senior in high school or maybe a junior in high school this is in the 90s pre-internet and all that i loved i loved i grew up in the middle of ohio so there was mm -hmm. the internet didn't start yet until like two years after um so i couldn't figure out djing i would have to go to bookstores i would find like the european editions of like dj magazines that had like kind of tutorials or like interviews with like djs and it didn't matter what genre it could have been like european house european techno european drum and bass it could be underground hip-hop stuff from new york i only listen to underground hip-hop but i would anything that was dj related it could have been a magazine that i found that was like a wedding dj's like mm -hmm. guide tutorial or something that and it, it didn't matter i read it all this because, was in high school yeah because i needed to like learn this stuff and the only touch point i had was yo mtv raps at the time yeah and that would be the only time i could ever see somebody actually dj it didn't exist in my little town i had a michael jordan rookie card so i sold the um michael jordan rookie card to get the 600 dollars. gave the guy the um the record i mean the money to get the uh, turntables and i brought brought him home and i taught myself how to dj a lot of the things that i'd learned are invalid at this point because it was like maybe 2005 2006 and then yeah. social media and, and mark the whole marketing paradigm everything changed but the thought processes of it were very helpful going to school for that became a huge part of my brand so even though i don't remember one thing i learned the fact that i'm a dj who is intelligent and a dj who has an mba and a dj who will still do other things to further my education like taking that harvard class or going to mit and speaking and those sort yeah. of scenarios it's positioned me differently than all my peers what makes me smart is that i know i don't know anything right i know that i don't know and that for that has kept me thirsty for learning. It's why I'm always reading and constantly trying to meet people to learn from them or have conversations or be in meetings or go to a class or, you know, to step out of my comfort zone because I'm not comfortable knowing that I can be better. But I moved to New York when I was 30. Like, I, th I mean, 30, most people are done with their growth period and they're settled into their whatever the fuck it is they're going to do for the rest of their life, at least where I'm from. Yeah. Like, you know, 30 was like 60. 30 was like, yeah. you, you were married, you had three kids. You had like, you know, the whole, the, the lawnmower, the whole, you know. You, <laughs> the riding lawnmower. You know, the whole shit, you know. Yeah. You went to the same bar you went to in high school or when you were in college. You know, like your life was very cyclical. And I was like, you know, at 30, I'm starting over. I'll tell you one thing. So I did a party out here last night. I don't normally play for that demo. I normally play for over 21 or, or just like a more mature brand type clients. Yeah. So um, it's the same music, of course, but it's just the, 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 the way they experience it's different. And I, I played the um, YG Fuck Donald Trump record. Yeah. And playing that now, even though that came out pre-election, it was interesting to play it then. Playing it now, it's like a rallying cry. For yeah. Me. It's like when you would drop Jay Z PSA in a club. Yes. Or you drop something else. You drop that, and and it's it's literally like I can't even explain it. It had to be like when Flex played the Benjamins in like '97 at the tunnel. We were at a party in Chicago. It's me, Matt Forte, our wise Ryan Mundy. Uh, a couple other guys, and it was right after one of the killings happened. Mm -hmm. They played Kendrick Lamar, All Right. Yeah. The energy in there was crazy. Like, then people started breaking down, like, crying and things like that when that song played. Like, and then people was hugging each other. Like, it was just a totally different experience because there had been a lot of the, the, the shootings and things that had happened. And then this song comes on where everyone's gathering in a place to have a good time. And it's just like, look around like man it's just like we're beautiful people this is going on and it was like a moment where you could reach out and touch someone's hand and just be like you don't even have to know them it's just like i got you bro music is almost in culture in general is, is pretty much re replacing and thankfully in a good way and shifting where, where our moral compass goes and where our emotional compass goes and where our leadership compass goes because it's not coming from where it's supposed to go in theory yeah it's not coming from the government it's not coming from 
supposed clergy members. It's not coming from like all these things historically. There were people that were, are supposed to lead us as a society forward. That shit's all a disaster. So we're actually leaning towards culture to lead us forward, and culture is finally like stepping up in an amazing way where you can have a Kendrick create a song. Yeah, like that. I think superhero films are a little bit washed out right now because yeah, they, they make so suck. many. So yeah, like it's just a machine. Right, and there's not a lot of artistry behind the machine because it's just pumping them out, pumping them out. Like, I didn't like the Avengers. I named my kid after um, the superhero. My kid's name is Miles. Miles, yeah. And I named him after Miles Morales, which is like the new Spider-Man. I love the idea for him growing up as a mixed kid in Brooklyn to be able to look at Spider-Man. And, and see himself say, in it. See, yo, that's me. We walked into the subway and there's like this huge Jay-Z Beyonce poster. Uh -huh. And he's standing there looking at it and he's loving it. And I'm taking all these pictures of him in front of it. These are who you're, not, these aren't just your, your cultural idols and your artistic idols, but these are going to be your business idols. Like when Beyonce said, you know, another like black Bill Gates in the making or whatever. Yeah. Like, like growing up, we, we had to look to Bill Gates. Yes. They could, my son and, and, and your daughter could like legitimately look to fucking Beyonce and Jay-Z as Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. That's the thing. When someone like Obama gets into office, it empowers the next generation. I think that's the biggest fear, um, fear for a lot of people because it's like, oh shit, they know now. Like, it's the whole idea of being woke. Like, being woke is like knowing that these things are actually attainable for you too. When I got married, and my, my wife is black, when I got married, my grandma was like completely, um, like, disowning of me. Grandma, who uh, actually got to become friends with my wife, and then they got really close. And what's amazing to me, what that taught me from that experience is, first of all, my grandma had two daughters. Never, they were nothing like my grandma. My grandma was very much more similar to my wife. And um, she always had a love-hate affair with her daughters because they weren't like her. And it's funny that like the person she thought she was gonna hate more than everyone in the whole planet, she ended up identifying with more. So what I love is that, I'm not saying like she when she died, she was like a card-carrying member of the NAACP or anything, yeah. but she, <laughs> it just shows you that it's never, <laughs> it'd be fucking amazing. Yeah, it would be crazy. But it's cool to see that even at 80, even with 79 years of, of, of like, what society tells you things are that you could literally change as a parent like you want to empower your kids but give them enough power to make decisions because how can you make a kid that makes great decisions if you never allow them to make decisions until they're 16 right and i think empowering the youth to be able to think for themselves and not have a hive mind and not think about what daddy would want or what mommy would want you to do but like what do i want in this moment like and then when my thing is i, I love for her to fuck up because it's a teaching moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I don't have those moments of fuck ups, then I can't can't teach. It's the same thing for me. Like if I don't fuck up like my business or fuck up with friendships or things like that, I can't learn. And if you think about it, that's a, that's a DJ mind state. So like if you're DJing and you're playing room, you could play very safe and you could play all hits and you can make everybody very happy. But what I want to do and what a, a real good DJ will do is you're going to try a song that doesn't really make sense in theory. You might try something that old that you're just trying to take people on a musical journey maybe something new that didn't even come out yet you're if you you know you'll know within 20 seconds if it's going to work if it fails it fails and you course correct and you adjust and the the, the, the joy and the journey is in fixing that and getting it back to where you want yeah. to go but if you don't take those risks you it's like what makes you different than than the spotify playlist you an avid reader like myself yeah. what is a book that changed your life i really like this book i just finished right now and it's getting a lot of press it's called the third door which I thought was about anal sex. <laughs> it's like, there's his theory. He basically set out to interview all these people about all these successful people about how they created their success, right? He he, he created a, he turned it into a nightclub analogy essentially, yeah. where 98% of the people are gonna wait in line. Yeah. Maybe they're gonna get in. Most of them aren't gonna get in. They're gonna have to pay. They're gonna have a normal, ordinary, not necessarily bad, yeah. not necessarily, but just a basic, ordinary human experience. Yeah. Then there's the one percent which are the, 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 the rich people, the socialites, the people who are, have the access and you know whether they earned it or deserve it or That's not is a, a whole other analogy. story. So there's those people, right, who are gonna go in the VIP. But then his analogy, which is the, literally the way I've, didn't, I didn't realize this, the way I've lived my life, my whole entire life, was there's the other 1% that sneaks in through the third door, through the ass, through the anus of the club. The back door. The back door. And they don't, they're the, you sneaking in the back door, you're sneaking into the kitchen on the chef's cart into the hotel. Yeah. It's like some Mission Impossible shit. Like we're coming yeah. through the vent. Like you're going to find your way to get into those situations. And that's exactly how I've lived my entire life. How old is your mom? I don't know. But she's like, she's magical 70. Wow, my mom is literally calling right now. Hey, mom. Hey, how are you? 
quick question. Uh, Do you want roast beef or chili? I want roast beef. Okay. So anyway, I, I got call it. me tomorrow. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. I love you. I love you too. Bye. Roast beef. Roast, roast beef. Let's get it. All right. Okay. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye-bye.